next on Adventures in Dry Gulch. Listen, Elmer, I got a, a big secret to tell you. We've got more money in the bank today than we've ever had in the entire history of Dry Gulch. Well, I just can't wait anymore, Elmer. I, oh, I'm so excited. Well, if I don't tell somebody, I'm just gonna bust. Elmer, God has really been blessing me. And I have made more money in this store in the past six months than ever before. I can't hardly believe that. <laughs> hey, listen, you gotta keep it under your hat. Keep it a secret. Those boots are expensive, and I don't want anything happening to them. Mom, say word. Zip, zip, button my lip. It's Adventures in Dry Gulch, featuring the Sheriff Gospel Bill, his sidekick, Nicodemus, the general store owner, Miss Lana, Good old Elmer Barnes, banker and mayor T.U. Tudwater, and the entire Dry Gulch Gang. Hey, Miss Lana. Hi, Elmer. Going fishing? Uh huh. Notice anything different? Oh, Elmer, I, I don't notice anything different. Well, unless that's a new tune you're whistling. No, it's a brand new fishing pole. Oh, Elmer, that's the same old pole you've always had. No, it ain't. This here pole's got tensile strength. What's that? Well, it just means it's stronger. So when Big Daddy comes and bites my line, I'll be sure to be able to get him. <laughs> oh, Elmer, that's great. Uh, Elmer, can I tell you a secret? Well, sure, if you can't tell me, who can you tell? Well, I just can't wait anymore, Elmer. I, oh, I'm so excited. Well, if I don't tell somebody, I'm just gonna bust. Elmer, God has really been blessing me, and I have made more money in this store in the past six months than ever before. Elmer, I've got more money in this register than I ever have. <laughs> but Elmer, don't tell anybody because, well, it's our secret. Oh, you can count on me. I won't tell a soul. Mum, they were zip, zip, but my lip. <laughs> Thanks, Elmer. See you later, Miss Lana. Hey, Charlie, how you doing? Hi, Elmer. Take a look at that. It's my new face ball. Well, what's so special about this? Well, I'll tell you what's so special about this. Tinsel strength. When I go fishing for Big Daddy, there ain't no way he can break this pole. I'm gonna catch him for sure. <laughs> Elmer, listen to this. Back there in the boot shop, I'm making a special pair of boots for, you're never gonna guess who, the King of England. No. Yeah, yeah. You, you know those special red boots I make? I had a customer up east buy a pair of them, took them over to England, showed them to the King of England, and now guess what? He wants a pair of them. I can't hardly believe that. <laughs> hey, listen, you gotta keep it under your hat. Keep it a secret. Those boots are expensive, and I don't want anything happening to them. Mom, say word. Zip, zip, button my lip. Congratulations, yeah. Charlie. <laughs> see you later. Okay, see you, Elmer. a very funny family. These guys really know how to monkey around. <laughs> and do I mean monkey. Let me introduce you to a family of lowland gorillas. Now this is Roger, and he's the teenager of the family. He's probably looking for a bug to snack on. Roger eats everything in sight. And this is Big Daddy. He weighs in at about 400 pounds. That's as much as two full-grown men. These gorillas look really mean and ferocious, but they're not. They're really very gentle. And this beautiful lady is Mom. Hello, Mom! Because male gorillas weigh so much, they leave the tree climbing to Mom and the kids. And hey, here's Junior. He's the baby of the family. Hi there, little fella. Now, gorillas live in the forest where there are lots of trees. They're very timid animals who prefer to stay away from human beings. Gorillas do not eat people or other animals at all. In fact, they feed on fruit and buds from plants. In the wild, they are found deep in the jungles of Central Africa. Why, 
watch this? A family acrobat. Quit showing off, Roger. We all know you can do tricks. This gorilla family reminds us of how much God loves each person in our family. And even though you've done really stupid things in the past, God loves you just the way you are. That's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross for your sins. So don't monkey around any longer. If you haven't already, let Jesus come to live in your heart. Now, Roger, that's more like it. You behave yourself. Pole. Take a look at that. Oh, it's uh, a fishing pole. Ooh, it ain't just any fish pole. This is my new fish pole. Oh, really? Well, I thought it kind of looked like your old one. Well, that's funny. Everybody's been saying that. But this one's different. It's got tinsel strike. When I cast that line out there and Big Daddy hits it, whammo! One pole and I'll have him. He won't break this pole. <laughs> Ooh, that's really neat. I'm real happy for you. It's about time you caught that fella. Uh, listen, Elmer, I got a, a big secret to tell you. We've got more money in the bank today than we've ever had in the entire history of Dry Gulch. Wow, how come? Well, it seems that the United States government decided to send the payroll for the entire army in this territory to this here bank. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, but I want you to know something. This is a big secret, and only because you're my good friend have I told you. The only people that know is me and Mr. Tutwater, and now you. And Mr. Tutwater, he's gone out of town on a business trip. He's got to promise not to say anything. Oh, you can count on me. I won't say a thing. Zip my lips, shut my trap. <laughs> Mumsy word. <laughs> oh, good. Well, oh, congratulations on your new pool. Well, thanks. Congratulations on your pool. See you later. Bye. <laughs> I'll just you. Well, hello, Elmer. Hey, thought you liked my new fishing pole. <laughs> well, it's quite a pole, but, uh... I don't think I can tell any difference between this one and the one you had before. Oh, there's a whole lot of difference. This one here's got a whole lot more tinsel strike. More tinsel strike? Well, what does that mean when you go fishing? Well, it means it's going to be stronger. Last time I was fishing for Big Daddy, he broke my paw. This one's guaranteed not to break. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, Elmer, listen, I'd really like to stay around and talk to you about this pole and catching Big Daddy, but I gotta go catch a couple of Big Daddies of my own. There's a couple of outlaws, burglars, and they just hit the Bar C Ranch, and, well, I'm gonna ride out and see if I can round them up. These fellas aren't very big, but, boy, they're sure mean, very clever. One of them's real lean, he's got beady eyes, and the other one's not too smart, but together, they really pull off the jobs. They've hit just about every town in this territory, and. I'm gonna see if I can get out and pick up their trail before they get to Dry Gulch. Okay, see you later, Sheriff. All right, Elmer. Ooh, I guess I oughtn't to let the citizens of Dry Gulch know Sheriff ain't gonna be in town. This town doesn't have one thing in it that's worth stealing. Look at that bank over there. Probably doesn't even have two cents in it to rub together. Wouldn't even be worth robbing it. Look at this general store. It's got to have cobwebs in its cash register. Oh, I'm so tired of these one-horse dumpy towns. Well, that livery stable over there must have some hay in it. Let's go get some shut-eye. At least the town's good for that. And we'll get up. Go to the next town, and maybe we can pull off a good heist tonight. Come on. Cool ball. Come on out of here. What is it, Elmer? Got something important I need to tell you. Well, what? Gospel Bill had to go out of town looking for two bad guys. Been holding burglaries in the area. 
They're two small fellers, kind of about your size. One of them's got baby eyes. And seeing how you got all that money right there in your safe. Shh, that's a secret, Elmer. Okay, I know it's a secret. But listen, if an I was you, I'd keep an extra close eye on all that money till Gospel Bill catches those bad guys. Well, okay, I'll, I'll do that. Thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it. Okay, see you later. Bye. Hey, Charlie, you still got those red boots for the King of England? Shh, that's supposed to be a secret, Elmer. Well, I know it's supposed to be a secret. You still got them? Yeah, I've got them, I've got them. Listen, I just wanted to tell you, Gospel Bill went out of town to get two bad guys. They're burglars. So if I was you, I'd keep an eye on those boots, okay? Elmer, in the meantime, keep that under your hat. That's supposed to be a secret, all right? Okay, Charlie, okay. Zip, zap, shut my trap. See you later, Charlie. This. It's gonna make a beautiful Miss egg. Lana, gotta tell you something. You know all that money you got right here in this cash register? Oh, shh, Elmer, I told you it's a secret. Well, I know it's a secret, but the sheriff's out of town looking for two bad guys, right? They've been going around burglarizing places, and I just thought you'd like to know with all that wagon load of money you got shh, in here. Elmer, I told you it's a secret. Okay. Mumsy word, zip, zip, bite my lip. I gotta go. <sighs> As I was saying, uh, it'll make a beautiful apron. Uh, well, now that we've gotten some good rest, I got an idea. We'll move on to the next town. I don't think there's anything in this town worth stealing. The place is a dump. Come on. Well, howdy, fella. New in town? Well, as a matter of fact, we are. But we're just on our way out. Well, what brings you to these parts? Well, my partner and I here were thinking about settling down in this little one-horse town of yours until we found out that there wasn't anything in this town to occupy men in our profession. Well, what is your profession? I guess you could call us brokers. Well, listen here, Mr. Broker. This ain't a one-horse town. See that stool right there? Miss Lana's got more money in her cash register than she's ever had before. And not only that, see that boot shop right over there? Right this minute, Charlie's working on a pair of boots for the King of England. He's one of the best in the country. Well, maybe we had your town peg wrong. Oh, you sure did. See that bank right there? They got more money in their vault than they've ever had before. They got the whole payroll for the army and all these parts in their vault. May not be as big as one of them banks back east, but it's got as much money. Well, I, I guess we did happen to read this here town a little bit differently than we should have. Uh, maybe we'll stay after all. Well, good. I'm glad I could change your mind. <laughs> Now listen, that information I gave you is highly confidential. Let's just kind of keep it under our hats, okay? Oh, sure, right under our hats. <laughs> okay, see you later. <laughs> Bye. Come on. Maybe this town is worth some shopping in after all. Let's go make some plans, huh? Yeah. Oh, this is the easiest money I've ever earned. <laughs> let's leave her a little change. Come on, let's get out of here. Come on. Oh, 
Hey, I've got an idea. Let's go by that bumbling idiot Blabbermouth's house. Hey, we'll cover our tracks. We can leave some incriminating evidence. I'll leave this box and one of the money bags. Come on, let's go. wait to get my hands on that Elmer Barnes. Now listen, fellas, I've known Elmer Barnes for a long time and this doesn't sound like him. Now there's gotta be a simple explanation. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Well, well, somebody's somebody's been been my my now hold on just a minute, just a minute now. One at a time, ladies go first, Lana. Somebody took all the money out of my cash register. Corn pone? Well, somebody's taking all the money from the bank. Charlie? I was making a special pair of boots for the King of England, and now they're gone. And I know Elmer Barnes took them. You don't know that, Charlie. Now, hold on just a minute. Charlie, why do you think Elmer took the boots? Well, Elmer was the only one I told, and now they're gone. I'm sure he took them. And I did tell Elmer about the extra money coming in from the payroll. Well, I told Elmer that this was the best month I'd ever had, too, but that doesn't mean he stole the money. Hold on just a minute now. Elmer's the only one who knew about your money, Lana? He's the only one I told. Corn Pone, are you sure that nobody else knew about that payroll? I'm positive, Sheriff. Charlie, did you tell anybody else about those boots? No, Elmer was the only one I told. And now they're gone. I'm sure he took them. Now, wait a minute. I'll admit this does look mighty suspicious, but I've known Elmer Barnes for a long time and I've never known him to steal. Now, I'm gonna go right over there to Elmer's place and have a good long talk with him. We're gonna get to the bottom of this and I'll let you know what I find out. I guarantee it, Elmer Barnes took those. I do know it, I do know it, I do. Hey, fellas, come on out, Dinky, come on out, Dinky. I'm gonna take you fishing. Oh, no, I won't use you as bait. Well, well, have I ever lied to you before? Come on in. Say, Elmer, I need to talk to you about something mighty important. Are you aware that the bank was robbed last night? Why, well, no. Yeah, somebody broke in the bank and took all the money out of the vault, and that's not all. Somebody broke into Lana's general store and took all the money out of the cash register, too. Oh, well, no, that's terrible. And somebody got into Charlie's boot shop and stole the boots that he was making for the King of England. Oh, well, that's just awful. You didn't know anything about those things, Elmer? Well, no, I didn't. Well, now, Lana and Charlie and Orville Cornpone, all three, told me that you were the only one who knew that there was lots of extra money in the bank and that Lana had a lot of money in her cash register and that there were boots like that in uh, Charlie's shop. Well, that's true, Sheriff. I did know about those things, but I didn't steal anything. Wait a minute. What's this right here, Elmer? This box is from Charlie's boot shop, and this money bag is from the bank. Elmer, is there something you're not telling me? No, Sheriff. I've never seen those things before. Elmer? Wait a minute. There was those two guys. What two guys? Well, those two guys that came to town. They started talking down Dry Gulch real bad. Said it was just a one-horse town and nothing important happens here. So I started telling them about all the important things, like 
Charlie's boots and, and all the money at the bank and, and Miss Lana's money. Oh. You know what? Those two guys were the burglars I was after. And you told them about all that stuff, and that's why they stole it. It looks to me like they must have framed you to make it look like that you were the one who stole those things. Well, Elmer, I'm gonna pick up the trail and see if I can wear them down. In the meantime, you're gonna have to learn to keep a secret. Yes, sir, Cheryl. Oh, Lord. Forgive me for being such a blabbermouth and causing so much trouble. Oh, no. I'm going to finally get to say I get to wear boots fit for a king. Yeah, <laughs> and it looks like there's at least $50 in this here sack. $50? Well, there ought to be at least $10,000 in that sack. And just think, we owe it all to that blabbermouth back in Dry Gulch. And nobody's going to suspect us. They'll think he did it. <laughs> Hold it right there, boys. Drop those guns to the floor. Now, listen. Boots look to me like they came from Charlie's boot shop in Dry Gulch. And that sack, that's from the Dry Gulch Bank. You boys are under arrest. Aren't you thankful that Gospel Bill caught those outlaws? I got every penny back. Yeah, he also got all the money back for the bank. Boy, I was glad to see those boots back again. I mean, after all, it's not every day that you get to make a pair of boots for the King of England. I worked pretty hard on those things. But you know, I learned one lesson here. If you ever want to keep a secret, don't tell Elmer Barnes anything. Oh, fellas, I don't think Elmer meant any harm. Well, I believe we all learned a valuable lesson. And when someone tells you a secret, you better keep it a secret. Hey, everybody. Oh, hi, uh, Elmer. I'm glad I got all three of you here together. I got something I'd like to say to you. I'm sorry for being such a big fat blabber mouth, and I hope you can forgive me. No hard feelings? No. Well, good, because if any of you got any more secrets that you want to tell old Elmer P. Barnes, I've learned my lesson. Mum's the word, zip, zip, butt my lip. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Miss Lana. Oh, Elmer, I'm so excited. Here's the new free catalog. There's your copy. Well, it's even got my name on it. Look at this new curriculum, Man's Beginnings and God's Chosen People for 6 to 12-year-olds. And there's a curriculum for little fellas, too, called Friends with God by Beverly Caps Burgess. And teaching aids for children's workers. Why, they even have a new Bible puppet skit video. And there's training school camp, Dry Gulch USA for children's workers. And for teenagers, Youth Express by Blaine Bartell. We're going to get our teenagers fired up for God. And we can do it with Fiber Night videos for teenagers and youth groups. And they have teaching cassettes for teens and t-shirts. And for the little people, they have books and tapes. And look at this here, Miss Lana. Smart Pants Nicodemus has eight music cassettes out. And the Video Purchase Club. Oh, Elmer, we can't get this in in 60 seconds. What are we gonna do? Well, just do what I did. Call the hotline number right here for your free catalog or right at Willie George Ministries, Post Office Box 639, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013. <laughs> You know, the Bible says that a talebearer revealeth secrets, and the book of Proverbs condemns the kinds of people who just tell everything and anything that they know. You know, we've got to learn to control our tongues. We can't just speak out everything we hear, and we can't speak everything that comes into our minds, because if you don't control your tongue, it'll get you into all kinds of trouble. You know what it'll do? It'll make your life into a great, big, fat mess. You see, the Bible says that the tongue can be such an instrument 
hunt that it is untamable. That means it's worse than lion or tiger. Uh, you have a hard time controlling it, telling it what to do. It just goes wild. And so it's important for you not to let your tongue go wild because if your tongue begins to go wild, it will mess up your life because your tongue controls the direction of your life. Wait a minute, we've got a real mess already here. This guy's tongue he is going wild. Now listen to this. Let's put this tongue back in, guy. You're going to have to roll this back up now. Now hold on to that right there, okay? Now we've got his tongue under control. All right, there it is. Now, the tongue, the Bible says, can be a, an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. And, and we need to be careful that we don't allow poison to come out of our mouths. And we've got to watch the things we say. We've got to learn to keep secrets when it's appropriate. And, uh, and then we can't just allow any thought and every thought that comes into it. Wait, this is happening again. You see, it's very, very, very tough to control the tongue. In fact, the Bible says the tongue is something that no man can tame. Well, in view of that, I think we better put this guy away and start talking about something else. I want to tell you that it takes the Lord's help to control your tongue, and only He can help you get control of that thing that's under your nose that can cause you so much trouble. And you can ask the Lord to help you control your tongue if you're a Christian, and you can do that by speaking His Word instead of all the negative things that uh, you think in your mind. And then, if you've never invited Jesus to come into your heart, you can do that too. And He'll come inside you, and He'll help you control that tongue and say the right thing. You know, the Bible says Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins. He did that for you and for me. Then the Bible says that He was raised from the dead, brought back to life again again, and he never died. There have been a few people down through the ages who've been raised from the dead, but nobody like Jesus. You see, Jesus came back to life and never did die. So, I want to tell you right now, he's a special kind of person. He's the Son of God. His resurrection proves it. And when you ask him to come into your heart, he comes by his spirit and his power, that resurrection power, can help you to control your tongue. So right now, if you've never invited Jesus to come in your heart, just bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead. I want you to come into my heart and be my Lord. And he will. Um, they would zip, zip, but my lips. <laughs>